The life of an HVAC technician is always different from day to day. One day you're repairing a furnace in an attempt to get it working again for Mr. and Mrs. Jones. The next, you're rolling around in an attic doing duck work. Now we're up here, we're gonna cinch onto that. It's crazy. He doesn't know if he's gonna be able to get into position though. He says he's got a, a $1,500 sensor on that. Whether you are maintaining, repairing, or actually selling the system you're going to install next, HVAC is a job that is not for the timid. Perseverance and creativity is an absolute must, just to make it through some days. This week on the life of an HVAC technician, Greg works on a sheet metal transition to mount to a duct mini-split system. Justin and Greg discuss a faulty control board on a day-night furnace. Totally, I, I don't, totally agree with that. Be careful not to pull it out of the wall, though. Right. And the crew works hard to fulfill a promise they made to a homeowner to remove a stove <laughs> pipe from the side of a home built in 1910. letting you know somebody took my button locks so that's why I'm having to screw in these so I uh, loaned them to somebody to use and now they're not in my tool bin
we got this ducted mini split right here and I just made the plenums that are gonna sit like that. And the other plenum is gonna come out here. And uh, so basically I just need to make a transition here to here, here to here. And that's what I'm gonna work on right now. So, um, and then up in the attic, my uh, roof line will be here. And I have some Unistrut, uh, some Unistrut that is gonna hold the panel up top here. And some all thread, about 10 foot sections of all thread that are gonna go up to the roof line and hold that up. <clears throat> so, and then I'll obviously um, strap this. I have to, by code, I have to strap this plenum and strap this plenum to the uh, roof as well. And then, um, and then if this is our return, then I got my return duct over here and it's gonna come in. And if I have my supplies over here, I have four supplies on this job, but we're gonna go, you know, probably off here and here and then two on the other side and our supplies are gonna come out there. So uh, right now I'm gonna work on getting that, um, getting this transition done right there, so.
be able to mount that up. That would be nice. Look at that. Good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right we got these done now so i showed you guys the first one that i put together and i spared you the boredom of watching me do the other one but pretty good got it all insulated this will be the uh return side i believe it's a return side here a nice transition there uh, that's the supply side to come out and then basically as these are laying down sideways we'll cut our holes on the sides and run our ducts out there and we'll cut our duct here and run our return that blower motor from the day when I wasn't doing anything until oh yeah it's like a one horsepower blower motor yeah, yeah so that motor is in perfectly fine I gotta turn it back on and the board keeps on saying reverse polarity, right? Okay. So I switch it. Okay. It does the same exact thing. And the thing won't even come on. I don't know if, there, if you've ever seen that before or it just it keeps on saying reverse polarity. No matter, no matter which way you have the wires. No matter which way. And, you know, usually I've had that issue and, and there's like a grounding issue, you know what I mean? <clears throat> So I check all the grounds, I check everything. I can jump it out, I can jump it out on the, the fan, it'll turn on. I can jump it out on the AC, it'll turn on. If I jump it out on heat, it won't come on. And then, um... That's a York, right? It's a day and night. Oh, day and night? Yeah. Um, the only thing that was a little concerning, Greg, was when I opened up that panel, right? Yeah. You can go put, put the blower in. Yeah. It was soaking like, wet? Weird. It was weird. Yeah. Like the blower compartment was wet. And uh, it's a <laughs> it's an attic ground unit? Yeah. Where's the water coming from? I mean, I know it just rained. Yeah, but it was inside the panel. I don't know if it was like just humidity over the past two weeks or what. There was, there was water. There's like, there's, yeah. Uh... It's a, so you say it's a, is it a 90% furnace or 80%? It's 90. 90%. Yeah. But the thing hasn't ran since I've been there. I left it unplugged. And when you left it, was it dry? Yeah. So when you left the unit a week ago, it was dry and it hasn't run. And now, now it's wet in there. Yeah. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't running when I got here. I mean, it would run for like 30 seconds. Like it would fire up and then the blower would kick off because it was running at 23 amps out of 14. Yeah. And oh. I mean, it was overloading. You know what I mean? Right. And so it would shut off and then it would trip by limit and then and that was pretty much it until that motor was done or um, cooled off, you know? But it wasn't wet and there was my thing. So. Uh, I mean, I know they say, I know they stay, the wife stays at home with the kids, they have like eight kids. Yeah, it's just heck of weird to me, like no matter what you do, you know what I mean, like I've yeah. switched the polarity. I was thinking like if you change the polarity of the wire, change the wires at the transformer, um, the hot and neutral uh, of the transformer, what would it do? I don't know, I could probably try that, but I don't know if they, uh, I think they plug straight into the board, you know, the wires. Those boards, those wires go straight to the board? Yeah, because, I don't know, that's the last, I mean, that's pretty much where I'm at, is, I don't know if that, I don't know if that board shot, I pulled it off. I mean, it sounds, out. it sounds to me, that's the first thing I want to think, think of, is that the board is shot. But it's just weird to me, that's what I'm saying, the only thing that's weird to me is it was not doing that before. And now, the only thing that's weird is, I put the blower in, the blower works fine. I know it works fine. I can, I can test it out. Okay. That's all working fine, but the board just doesn't get past this polarity thing. 
and without that, without that, I mean, it's just not going to run. Yeah, we can't just throw a board in there and test it, you know, and then say, oh yeah, okay, that works. So now you owe me six oh five. I mean, we gotta ask him, do you want to continue on with this diagnostic, or you know, like here's the thing. I here I, now I've replaced the board. I've replaced the blower motor now. You know, now the now the control board's um, acting up. Um, you know, the, the blower motor was running at this amp before, which is way above factory spec. So this is why we changed the blower motor. Um, yeah. And then that will let us test the system and see how the system's running from there. Now the control board is saying it's got issues. Do you want us to continue <coughs> diagnosing this or... Um, do you want to try and keep making repairs on this? You know, how old is that system? How old is it? Yeah. It's like four years old, five. Oh man. Yeah, because it just caught the warranty. And he was up there the entire time, so he knows. He, when I was up there diagnosing it to begin with, he already knows that blow. Oh, good. Okay, okay. And, and I showed him everything. He already knows where it was. He saw the amp draw. He knew. It was, he felt the temperature of the motor when I pulled it out. Okay, and, good, good. Yeah, so it's not like, well, I'm not trying to battle that. And then he just popped his head up there right now. He's like, how's it going? I'm like, the motor works fine. But now, you know, the board is saying this, this, and this, which isn't accurate, you know. So I just told him that I was trying to check the grounds, make sure everything was grounded right. But, you know, I told him it was a concern. I told him it was a concern with how much water was in there. I was like, I don't know where this water came from. He's like, we cook like all day. And I'm like, well, something, I mean, I just came from Texas through where it's humid and I didn't right. see a lot of water in there. Right. You know, just straight from like humidity, but I don't know, maybe the attic is warmer. You know, the attic's warmer. The, the rain, warmer. the rain, is there any chance that it got into the flue pipe and then came out, you know, fell out of the uh, inducer assembly or something? I wouldn't suggest so because I didn't see any water in the burn compartment. It was just <laughs> It's just in the blower compartment? Yeah, there's just water there. You know what? Call call um call Paul over at um Gary Pacific okay. and tell him that um that I told you to call over there and tell him what you told me and see what he says about that. And I think he's gonna have some questions for you as well. But I yeah. think he's gonna end up telling you that the board's bad. And, but I'd be really interested to hear what he has to say. Okay, for sure. I'll call, I'll call them and, yeah. and then see if I can pick his brain for a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, I'll exactly. Let yeah. Great, man. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Let me know uh, what he says, all right? All right, I will. All right, man. Bye. What's up, dude? Hey, man. What, uh, what did you find out on that? Right, um, right. It could be, and it could be causing like an electrical connection or something, something that, you know, maybe polarity's messed up. Totally, I, I don't, totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, same here. So I brought, I came up here with a little towel and um, dried everything off, made sure everything was clean. And I fired it up and the polarity code went away. Are you kidding me? Wow. No, yeah, it did. But then I go to fire it up right now from the thermostat because so I was going to get rid of the lead. Yeah. But it's like short cycling on uh, on uh, no flame or flame sense. And I clean the flame sensor. It's got three um, millivolts or microamps, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's good, but it keeps cutting out. Now the board's telling me that there's no flame sense. You got a bad board, man. It's got to be. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. No. Nope. Yeah, that's definitely a bad board. You got all kinds of stuff going on with that with that wet board or whatever that happened. So yeah. I would uh, I would definitely recommend uh, getting that board. It, it would just be like a you know it'd just be a level three for a, for the labor for labor for us to uh, put it in. You might he might as well get it before the labor you know before the warranty goes out. Yeah, for 
Okay, so the dilemma we have here is I got that big stove pipe there that I need moved. And yesterday we tried to do it with just three guys. The thing's about, it's about 300 pounds. So I'll show you what we're dealing with. We, we're running line set over and we actually have to get the wall penetration is going to come out behind this stovepipe that's not being used. So uh, we got it away from the wall there. Right now it's just temporarily strapped in there. So after fussing around with it for a long time, we decided to get a crane to come out and see what he can try to do. So he's going to try and He's basically gonna try and perch up. He's basically gonna try and get his crane <laughs> so, that, so that he can drop the ball there. He's gonna try. And then if he can, we're, we're gonna go up on the roof and cinch it. And then we're gonna, we're gonna lower it down. And if we can lower it down, then we can push it down against the fence. But right now we got that power line. Cable line I'm not too worried about. It's the power line that I really don't want to hit. And that's there. So yesterday we were going to try and lower it down right between these two wires. But it just got too scary for us. So we decided not to do it. So, so we're going to see what we can do. There's, there's really no guarantees that this is going to happen. So... A cinch onto that. It's crazy. He doesn't know if he's gonna be able to get into position though. He says he's got a, a $1,500 sensor on that. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. Right there. That's a good spot right there. I think that's a good spot. That's a good spot. not work as soon as we started lifting from the top this uh, sheet metal started separating so there's a brick liner on the inside of that <clears throat> this brick liner right there goes all the way up <clears throat> so we just got to figure out another way to get this down but uh, the crane is not gonna be it we're thinking about taking this liner off this sheet metal off and then breaking the brick from the top down or the bottom up. But we're still here. So we're gonna use the plywood right here and we break the T that's holding it on the wall Then it should slide down and we break it as it slides. Yeah. It slides a little bit, we break it, it slides a little bit more, we break it again. Because as soon as we break that, then the rest of the liner is gonna start, is gonna fall down. There's gonna be an initial, there's gonna be an initial pipe falling down. We need to protect those panels. And we have plywood that we can do that with. We'll get some extra straps there so that it doesn't fall away from the house. I like it, Colin. I think we should uh, try it. <laughs> All right. What could possibly go wrong? All right, so we're gonna start 
we've got this thing strapped. We're gonna prevent the pipe from hitting the power lines here. I like it. There it goes. Do we have a small? Now break that, yeah. Wait, yeah. There we go. Breaking it into pieces down here. There we go. Aaron, give it a shot. It's pretty heavy. Good thing Colin works out. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Good. I loosened that up for you. <laughs> you can either now hold. the look at see that little yeah. ring? Yeah. No, yeah. That's the same ring we had the first time. Each section has its own like stuff yeah, in. Exactly. Now let's get this thing out of the wall. Yeah. And, and then, then now it'll just be the slide will start a little higher. Uh, you know what I mean? So he said, there's, I think, I think we can see, see out now. now. I, I think, think, we, I think we should just keep going out. We're doing it. I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll come, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Don't smash that stuff, because some of that's falling behind the board. Mm -hmm. Just pull this out. Yeah, yeah, I think you're good, Colin. You're looking. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Hit that hit that pipe. <laughs> nice. Nice. Is that all of it, Keith? I think that's all of it. Oh my god, dude. Why didn't we think of this yesterday? So glad I got that on camera, dude. You see that big old piece of shit? Yeah. <laughs> I've had some bowel movements that came out like that. Yeah. <laughs> little top of your first and then bloosh. Bloosh. <laughs> I think this is a lot lighter now. Just a little bit. Right? <laughs> oh, Keith, just throw it off. Can you, can you get it? Tear it off the roof. Take off our bottom strap. I, no, I just take the top one all right, I mean, the way I just top. don't want it to smack me in the face, you know? Yeah. Why? Yeah, why, would you, why would you be worried about that? And Sasha probably divorce me if I looked ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha would not divorce you. With fillet open your face. Going to lunch after this. Yeah. All right, boys. Look, you can see the hole I cut. <laughs> Don't do that and then hit the cable. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the hole I cut for the kitchen unit right there. Yeah. 